most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. All right, Brad, today we're going to talk about the top 10 exercises for leg lymphedema. This is swelling or edema in your leg. Sure. And these are something you can do two to three times every day if you want to. Mm -hmm. uh, good time to do it is right away in, you know, in the morning and then uh, of course at night. Right, um, right. And then maybe try to slip one during the day if you take your little nappy bread. <laughs> So <laughs> gotta have the nap, Bob. All right, let's go ahead and start off, right? Well, I, I don't. I just wanted to briefly mention uh, some people do get swelling confused with lymphedema because they're two separate things. Like if you sprain your ankle or your knee and things swell up, that's different than edema. Like someone that that may have that you see their um, well lymph nodes were maybe removed from a leg and that's that's causing it or or um, even like congestive heart failure right and, so you have yeah. this it's swelling up and getting larger but it's not from trauma it's because the fluid is not going back through its natural path to recirculate so to speak into your system so you get this buildup of fluid but not from an ankle sprain, that's a little different treatment than what we're talking about. Yeah, here. it's really important for you to understand that the fluid, when you build it up and get it built up in the leg, it doesn't go out through your toes. It's got to go back up into, sure. your, into your trunk here, get mm -hmm. processed, and then you're going to urinate it out. Right. So that's, you know, you may actually end up going to the bathroom more. Often. Right. Th that is one so, of the, it, with a true lymphedema patient that has a lot, and we go through a full massage treatment, a lot of times it's a good sign if they have to say, I need to go urinate, you know you're doing your work. And this has to be approved by your doctor because you could overload your system if you're having heart problems. Exactly. And so th this is something that should be, you know, doctor approved. And by the way, if you're new to our channel, Brad, mm -hmm. uh, please take, you're not new to our channel. Well, I might be though. All right, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We have the subscribe button over there. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, and pain-free, and we upload every day. Let's get started, Brad. Say no more. All right, so you're gonna start in what we call the supine position on your back, and you like to elevate your legs in some fashion. Um, this is gonna make it a lot more effective. Right, so you get, so your legs here, you know, if, even if they're this high, you're fine. You need to get them higher than your heart, so higher than the chest level. Right, there. if you can, you know, if, if it's through pillows or if you can get one of those wedges that we always tell Brad. Right. So, but you're going to start off with just by curling your toes, Brad. Right, so he's just simply wiggling his toes up and down. And to do that, the muscles for your toes are actually up in this part of your legs, so you're getting movement from here and here to help get that fluid moving that's what we're looking for all right then we're just going to go to ankle pumps ankle pumps yeah, yeah. look at those ankles pumping you know i think every therapist in the world calls these ankle pumps yeah. because you're just working and pumping and you can just you can actually see the movement in the leg now we're getting more muscles working up in this part of the the leg which is going to help push that fluid this direction and these you can do a good 15 20 times sure and yeah. then you can go into circles yep and they're, they're, they're great to exercise the ankle, good range yep. of motion. So you're not just working with the, the lymphedema movement, but you're working a good joint exercise so and muscle. Now we're going to go into a little hip and knee flexion, Brad. Okay. You still can do that from this position sure, here. Sure, right. So we're going to just work this side. You know, we can do it 10, 15 times, and then we can go to the other side 10 to 15 right. times. And, you know, use your judgment if you've got a bad knee or a hip. Do the best you can with it. But you should not be pushing yourself into any pain. These should be all pain-free. Now, at this point, Brad, it's going to be a lot easier if, th if this is out of the way. Right. So whatever you're using to uh, lift your legs up, we're going to go in the more supine, true supine position. So now we're doing what we call clam shells, but we're doing them a little bit differently. But it looks like a clam is going to opening and closing right. here. So, so you put your feet, your feet together, right. your ankles together, yep. and you go ahead and, and open the clam, close the clam. Exactly. Just abduction, adduction, back and forth. With those so things. then you can also do it this way, Brad, where you just go out this way and do abduction and adduction. Right. That, that one takes a little more strength up in the hip because yes, it you're does. Like being suspended. Uh, if you can do it, go ahead and do it. If, if you're not strong enough, that's okay. You can skip that one. So we're at number seven. Number eight, we're going to do butt squeezes, Brad. Okay. And believe it or not, it's just what we're talking about. Yep. We're squeezing the butt together yep. in just this think position. About squeezing those butt cheeks, those big gluteus maximus muscles are working, and they're going to get some fluid movement. All right, then we're going to go to bridging, Brad. Yep. So I'm, I'm lifting my mid midsection up here. Sure. And down again. Yep. Now, on this one, um, you know, Bob's holding his head up like that just so he can talk to the camera, but you want to be laying down and relaxed. Relaxed, yeah. Yep. And uh, 
go ahead and do your bridges. Okay. And, and also with this, you got gravity working to get that fluid going the right direction. Um, and the last one that, and we, by the way, we skipped one, Brad. We sh we're supposed to start off with diaphragmatic breathing. Ah, so we'll, that's we'll an show that. One too. I'll show that next. But it would be trunk rotations. Sure. But, but before you even start any of these, it's great for you while you're with your legs up in that position is to work on diaphragmatic breathing. And so uh, diaphragmatic, what, let's, maybe we should well, get into A lot of people bit. think that when you take a deep breath that you're supposed to expand your chest like this mm -hmm. and then breathe out. What we really want is the diaphragm that if you want effective breathing is the diaphragm is going to expand while you're breathing in. So your stomach actually comes out while you're taking a deep breath in. All right, because... Can you see that, Brad? Do it, do it some more. Let's get that belly going. So you're going to let that stomach raise. Now, this is something, especially in our society, in the United States anyway, everyone thinks the stomach should be in tight so you look good. So naturally, people breathe in their chest, especially men. <coughs> you know, their get chest, chest breathers. Yeah, yeah, their chest breathers, which is not going to do anything for what we're looking for yeah, here. We, in order to get that lymph flowing, the lymphedema flowing, you need to have... The, the proper breathing going on here. So, right. and actually, I'm even going to go as far as the diaphragm. If you're not familiar with it, is a a big, broad muscle, kind of like a big pancake that separates the lungs from the visceral or the internal, the stomach and the intestines. And when that muscle expands and you get air into your lungs, it pushes down. Therefore, the the abdominal contents have to rise up, and you get that belly that. Right. You know, that big bulgy belly. And well, I think what you'll find is, you know, you want to breathe in through the nose. Mm -hmm. And then out through the mouth. Yeah. Kind of you know, a lot of times like you're blowing air out with the purse, purse lips. It's a great way to relax. When you do this and you think about it, everything has to relax to have this happen. So but again, thinking about the fluid has to go into the abdominal area. Right. Here. That, that's really got to be relaxed. So you want to do this, you know, you want to do it to start off with, and then you want to do it throughout the exercises too. So you maintain that, that breathing in that same level of... Yep. How are we doing for time, Brad? Seven. Okay, why don't you go ahead and let's talk a little bit about the massage. Sure. So yep. do you want to do it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, actually, no, stay there, Bob. This will work out well. Um, I just want to talk about the flow of the, the fluid. Why don't you bring your legs down? Okay. Again, like Bob mentioned, you got lymphedemia. We want to bring it from the toes and the feet, and it's gonna go travel all the way up. And this is the, Aaron, our, our, our expert at this, talked about, think of having a drain right here, like in a bathtub, right there at your belly button. And all this fluid has to get up there and drain down into that drain, and then it gets into your system and your body recycles it and works with it as it's supposed to. Now, the how you work with this as far as how are we going to get it there? If it's down here, how are we going to get it up there? Are we going to start doing a massage and pushing it here, and we're going to push that fluid up like that? That's how I used to think. That right. makes sense to me. It's just the opposite. Think of this fluid that's going right underneath the skin, and it doesn't go deep. It's, it's underneath the skin, and it's flowing, 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 goes through your lymph nodes in this area, filters it, and then it goes into the drain. So what we need to do, think of it like a dam. We need to clear the area up in here before the fluid here can get up there. So we're going to do a massage like this. Your hands are here. I got, I got my weird hand here, yep, Brad. Yep. And we're going to start here and then pull it up to that drain. So you're pulling from your femoral crease right in your pocket. So you're going up to the belly button where that drain is and you're clearing. Now you don't have to push real hard. This is when you just put some mild pressure on there just enough to remember the fluid is right below the skin and you're going to get that fluid moving from there. Now you have an empty spot here. It's like a vacuum, and it's going to help pull the fluid from this direction. Gotcha. Now you're going to reach down as far as you can. So right if in. I was sitting up here, wouldn't yeah, that work better? You're right. Anything? Actually, that would. You can get to this. Now, this is assuming for yourself if you're doing a self-massage. Right. And people that get total knees, and some of the surgeons will instruct this massage right in the groin area, and you're pushing it up to that femoral crease. So you started here in the stomach, and then you're going here. And then if you have someone to do this for you, the next place you know, would be working from the, the ankles to the knee and then the feet. So you're actually working in a backwards sure. uh, now, manner. Right, so this is just a big concept, just to give you the idea. But certainly again, on your own, you could do this, yep. and you could do this. Right, exactly. Uh, and and that'll, that'll help a lot exactly. in, in breaking that dam loose. So, 
The other thing, by the way, Brad, a lot of times the old-fashioned way of thinking was they'd use ace wraps, mm -hmm. and and they really shouldn't. You should use Comperlin wraps. Yep. Um, and I'll put the spelling down below. There's no stretch to a Comperlin wrap, or very little. Well, they they don't stretch one way at all, and the other way they do, but you don't put much pressure on it. Right. I always thought, well. Tape it down tight, get, right. get that fluid out of there, but that's not going to help. Not the, so, you know, so that alone, too, is another thing you should you know, you make sure that they're using Comperlin wraps yep. when they're wrapping you sure. as opposed to an ACE wrap. So oh, I know this is all just very basic, and it's mostly about the exercises, but hopefully it helps. Right. So thanks for watching. Enjoy and take care.